we have no problem hearing anyway because the size of the house is 3,000 square feet. Okay, so Sergeant is so respectful that we have any public hearing. I don't want to hear it. Sergeant is so tired. As soon as we're done with this. So, my intro is dry as a subject. So, I just need to open that on a survey and just to show in the survey. Alex, you on? Okay, good evening, everyone. We welcome you to uh, the zoning board, and we will begin the meeting with. Okay, good evening. I guess we'll have a motion to open the meeting. I certainly. All in favor? Aye. And we will now do pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so the first item we will do is to um, I can have a motion to approve minutes from the August 16th meeting. So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. And uh, next item, we will review correspondence. Liz, you need that now? What do we need? Because we. Oh, this is the correspondence for you. Oh, this is the, um, yes, we just need a um, motion. A motion to authorize the uh, Village Board of Trustees to be lead agency that you can send to that request. Yes. Um, we can have a motion for that. So moved. I second. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we can we've signed it already. So do we need to sign it? Oh, that's fine. Great. Thank you. Okay. And so now we move to old business. No, we have another. Um, correspondence, um, 39 Suffolk Street. Brought my old one. So, uh, 39 Suffolk Street. Request for a one year extension on their CBA approval from November of 2021. You can get a motion to approve that. Uh, I don't know what it was. Yeah. So, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Thank you. Now we will move to all business. And the first item there is 287 Main Street. I don't see anybody on for that yet. What's the second caller? Sure. Oh, hold on, he's here. Here? Yep. 
Hi, Alex. Hey, hi, everybody. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Thank you for joining us. Happy to, happy to. Sorry, I couldn't be there in person. If is Carrie there? Carrie is here. Hi, Carrie. Is there any chance you could shoot me the agenda by email? Because I was not able to uh, pick up my packet this afternoon. I ran out of time. I lost my car key. Um, I can't do it right now because I'm in the meeting. Yeah, oh, okay, no problem. Liz is going to do it. Thank you, Liz. Robert? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Hi, Carrie. Oh, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, how are you? Am I Am I up? Yes, you are. You are Jake up. isn't here yet. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, no, no problem. I can... Um, I can dive right in. It's great to have two-way Zoom. Sorry, I'm not there in person. Um, so, hi, Liz. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, um, I can do a quick recap um, of the previous two meetings. Um, so, uh, we've incorporated for my project all of the feedback from the board thus far. Um, as a result, we are no longer asking for a variance for parking um, or for GFA. Um, and the GFA is now below the allowable amount for this residence. Uh, and also the pre-existing non-conforming parking spaces will remain on the existing driveway. Um, so you know, <clears throat> hopefully you remember the, those conversations from the previous meetings. Um, sorry, I missed the last one, um, but here we are. Um, and then we've also incorporated the board's most recent feedback to further reduce our skyplane burden. Um, we've dramatically reduced the skyplane variance down to a modest 890 cubic feet. Um, this is now the only variance being requested. In addition to the official public notices, by the way, um, that we distributed to all neighbors at the beginning of the application, we also conducted additional outreach uh, to all neighbors again um uh as requested in the last meeting and we asked that um those neighbors write to the board with enthusiastic letters of support um it's my understanding that at least one of our neighbors have done so um and uh we're trying to reach out to the owner of the cove deli who is the other immediate neighbor um he's been quite long retired so i haven't been able to reach him but he i know he's aware of the project um so yeah, so now I'm just asking you know, the board to consider these additional measures and that we move to approve the application today. Did we eliminate the lot coverage change because we went from, we went from 35.7 to 34.6? Is that still accurate? Yeah, that, that's still exactly the same, yeah. Okay, so that's still a variance though, correct? Okay, it's, yes. It's still 34.6. What did you say, Scott? Oh, I'm sorry. So they've reduced the lot coverage from 35.7 to 34.6. Right. And it's listed as a um, as right. one of their variances requests. So that's still a variance request. Yes, but okay. it's reduced, so it doesn't that's, need to be re-noticed. Right, right. 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 No, no, no. But it was pre-existing? Yeah. Right. It was pre-existing higher now. It's reduced, lower, right. But it's still over the. Usually, amount, grant so. the grant the variance by stating that right. it was pre-existing. It was higher. Right. right. Okay. Just want to make sure we're saying. And so. So the only real new thing is the well, it's not new. It's a reduced. It's reduced. And I'm sorry. What was that about? Eight hundred ninety. Eight ninety. Okay. Right. Oh, 893. Is that correct? And that's the pyramid? Pyramid. Oh, yes. It's written down on the plan. Yeah, 893. And then 
No, because there's 3,182 cubic feet of existing knot. And I can't remember, did you that before the ARB? Yeah, so we did have a um, discussion item with the ARB and we already incorporated their feedback from that meeting. And then I believe next is the certificate of appropriateness after this. Right, right. It's just, it's just the peak in the back right. part of this wall. Yeah. Here's so I just want to make sure I was Yeah, here's part of it there and part of it here. So it is split. It's not all on one side. Right, I think we had talked about um, the fact that if you were to move it, shift it one way or the other, it impacts the, the uh, what the area you wanted you to do in terms of design, correct? Um, right, so we, um, so we did a couple of things to, to make that reduction. One of them was shifting, um, uh, shifting it further away from uh, the deli side so that it's um, uh, less of a, a burden on the sky plane, and we also changed the roof line design. Right. So many I think that um, I think we discussed um, lowering ceiling heights, and I think we're down at already seven. Yes, we're down already at seven something six to the top of the plate. So they've already reduced the um, height um, down. Eight. Right. Right. Yeah, it's been reduced that way and that way. This is me. Um, is anyone in the public here to talk about 287B? Mm -hmm. Do you have any, Alex? Do you have any? No. So clearly, um, we very much appreciate all the changes that you have made to date in working with the board and hearing you know, the only thing would be is it is still um, a large number to be piercing. Um, but we recognize how much change you've made in working with, I guess, both boards. Um, so I will reach out to say, to our fellow board members, any input or thoughts? 
Well, I was concerned about the parking and that seems to have been dealt with. Uh, I don't know how you shrink the size of this house uh, to accomplish what I think the space requires. Or this house modification. I, I basically, I think, okay with it. I mean, we got rid of the, the GFA issue, which was a big one. And it is within the range of the I don't know what you think, Alex. Um, you guys, I'm having a little bit of trouble catching up. So I'm just listening as best I can, but I'm not seeing seeing images and so on. Well, there's no images. This was in the packet. Right. Oh, that's a problem. Right. Can we, um... And you you got it on email also. Yeah, I know. I'm. Just, I apologize. I'm just catching up with trying to find find everything since I was not able to grab the packet before I left. So I'm trying to track it down on email. Let's let Alex catch up. And then we can have a look. Yeah. What, what kind of press are we setting here? To see. Well, I mean, we, um, if I'm not incorrect, um, 152 division, we already granted a variance of 890 cubic feet, correct, for a sky variance. Is that correct? I don't think that one came out. No, it was reduced to 220. Right. No. no, no, that's the Oh, the original. Oh, the prior. Yes, yes. Sorry. So it was. It was we've already. Nine degrees. So they're asking for nine. Eight ninety three. Oh, eight ninety three. So it is in the room. Right. I mean, we've granted variances. It's very before. Yeah. And given that they've shifted it and shrunk it. You, you also have to close the public hearing if you want. Right. So just let, let Alex catch up here. So we're talking about the, the sky plane of 3,180 cubic feet. Um, the, that's the existing sky plane. The, the, the variance that we're requesting is in the pink or red, which is 893 cubic feet. 893 cubic feet? Correct. And if you look at page, um, you can sort of, uh, if you look at page A202, shows it on the back, which gives you a pretty good description of um, how it's split. So it's just the pink A202. Is that the page you mentioned, Scott? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That to me seems modest enough, as does the absolute number. You know, it's a little higher than we would like, but we've certainly approved others of that amount. And just visually, it doesn't seem, you know, way out of scale. Okay, so we can make a motion to close the public hearing. More questions? I see. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then if we take a, a vote here to approve the two parts, the 893 on the pyramid, but we split as shown on the drawings, as well as um, to approve the proposed lot coverage, which was pre existing at 35.7, it will be reduced down to 34.6. So, um, Joel? Okay. Uh, if there is precedent for it, and we're comfortable with it, I vote. Okay. Alex. I'm sorry, what did Joe say? I vote for it. Given, the, for pres it. given the precedent you've cited. Yeah. 
I'm comfortable with it as to uh, with it as well. With the caveat that I did not, I was not uh, the the beneficiary of the full discussion because I was scrambling to catch up. Um, I'm fine with it. I think it was good in that they reduced. Yeah, they got rid of the variance for GFA, um, which was a significant thing to do. Um, the reducing the lot coverage. And the house is in an awkward place, meaning it's very close to one property line. So it creates a condition where it's very hard not to add on without right. a pyramid variance. On a somewhat narrow lot to begin with. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. right. So the combination is all ones that you've worked with us, um, which is very much appreciated. So with that, um, we would ask. Uh, Liz, if you could write a decision for that approval. Yep, so I'll draft the decision and then Alex, you can certainly review the record and read the decision before you vote on it next time. That sounds good. Thank you, Liz. I need a Thank you. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. I'm going to stay on mute. Okay, so we just need a motion for Liz to write up the um, summary. Also I second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Now we go to 207 Mass. Replace. Good evening, everyone. Should be scroll up. 45 Division Street for the applicant. Um, we have submitted revised plans to the board. Our original request was for a three inch setback relief and 1,814 cubic feet of sky cleanland relief. We reduced that down to 998 cubic feet of sky plain relief. Um, I do have the architect on along with us if the board has any particular questions about that. The only thing I'm missing is you do have an electronic copy of the survey, but I do need to get prints to you. Um, I mean, I did have them. Oh, yeah. perfect. Thank you. So I guess um, one, we appreciate uh, you working with us and reducing it from the 1800 down below, you know, just below 1000. The question is, um, are there other options to reduce that? Some more. Could you move it? Very the entire addition forward. I think the architect can explain exactly yeah. how. Yeah, so I mean, the first thing we did uh, since the last meeting that was we actually tried to change the shape. Um, basically to follow the sky plane. And of course that will help a lot, uh, but it changed too much of like the, the client and the architectural uh, vision of kind of creating this continuous house of this addition of the existing. So we want to keep the, the same shape of roof that we did uh, initially, but so to only the only way to achieve that and still reduce the sky plane was, or the variance, was basically to we basically move the whole building and we lowered the shape of the the roof line. So if you see the previous submission and now we actually made it less uh, pitched and we actually moved the whole building further in. So we actually that's the way we kind of almost half uh, we actually lowered with almost one thousand cubic feet the the variance needed compared to the previous submission. And it had required a lot to change the plan and the circulation and the flow of staircase to, to do that move from the uh, original layout. You know, one thing that I would say is always helpful if you show what you would initially submitted and then show the change on that same paper so that we can see what you did that just makes it. Um, New request, but I, I'm happy to comply with no, the future. I'm just saying in the future. I think we've asked for it many times in ARB and now in ZDF, yeah. so that would be because it's hard to make suggestions. Yeah. Understand. To uh, Alex, do you have these? Yes, I have. I have the new amended uh, drawings. Is that what you're talking about? 
Yes, I just want to make sure you were on the same page. Just a, to, a, in a very similar situation to that which the board just heard on Main Street, we have a very narrow lot at 68.74 um, in width. And we do have a house that is situated on the property, slightly crooked, aiming towards the, I'm going to say the north or west, sorry, off to the west on the house, which creates a situation again, same, similar to the prior case where in order to even add any kind of addition to the house with some pre-existing sky plane violation, you're bound to run into it. Um, the other thing I want the board to consider, and I don't know if, if these board members, Scott may have been here long enough, but the, the village changed their sky plane regulations at some point for some unknown reason. It used to be five feet up and then a 45 degree angle. They now start at grade level at a 45 degree angle. So understand the variances that had been previously issued <clears throat> were significantly more than what we're asking for, or significantly less than what we're asking for. Yeah. Um, no, it increases. It increases. Uh, it increases the sky plane violation. Whereas, I'm sure. right, I'm just trying to straighten my head. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and and I, I'm not really sure why they did that, but it all it did it was resulted in an increase in sky plane violations. They are yeah. up here in front of this board. I believe it was done just to reset. Reset the law. Well, needless to say, <laughs> under under the previous code, we probably would not even be here. But um, here we go. So were you able to reduce the plate heights at all in addition to moving it in or did all the heights in the house stay the same? No, we did We did lower the second floor, um, but you don't see it too much because we still needed the parapet and et cetera if you look at the elevations. But when we do the section, we did lower the, uh, the, the volume is lowered basically uh, for the floor height. We lowered with, from it was nine feet before and we lowered like to eight and a half i have to double check that but we lowered that's the only way we could reduce this amount of uh, cubic feet we we lowered basically the whole volume both in height and also the shape of the roof line and we moved the whole building in so that's that's the way we reduced like those that 1000 cubic feet from the previous submission You know, the ideal is to have uh, none, but that's very difficult to do when you have half acre zoning that you're imposing on lots that don't even come close to meeting your half acre requirements with your 100 foot lot, lot width. Um, I, do I mean, like yeah, and that, that's that's also something we want to explain like why we even started in this direction was the, the original house is not parallel with the site, and that's why the, even the original house is having having almost 1,000 cubic feet outside the sky plane. And we want to create the new addition to follow the same direction of the existing house. I mean, if you were rotating in following the shape of the side, then of course we could stay within it, but we feel like then you will create like two different buildings. And we really want it to look like a natural evolution of what was there and then following the same direction and flow of the existing house. But that's kind of the thing, because if we start rotating the building and not just moving it, of course, we could stay within the sky plane, but then we will have something that looks very different from what is there already. And I can't remember, has the ARB seen any of this? No, we have not been to the ARB. I did not want to go there without a set of plans that this board has. Uh, so it, it's correct that the existing um, pyramid law, the existing structure was 816. 800, is that correct? No, the existing building, let me just check the number. Yes, exactly. The, ex, the existing building is 816 and ours is 1,000. So is it 1,000 or you were it will turn out to be, I, I, what's the total on that number? Sure. It's 18, 1816 in total put together. So we are adding the existing is 18, sorry, eight, 816. And then we are building 
additional 1,000 cubic feet. So the only, the additional pyramid violation is going to be 816, correct? It's a thousand. Or 998, if I'm not mistaken. So the one here is, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It says total to Yes, the total of both, yeah. both the existing and the new would be 18. Um, piercing pyramid law, and you're looking to add a thousand ish. Is that not what it's? Yes, cor correctly. Yes. So that means we would be improving 1800, 1816, which is no, that was the original request. So, no. <laughs> my, my understanding is no, that it's a thousand. It's a thousand. Proposed is I know, so that I'm just trying to understand why it says total that we see this. Oh, we had these two together. Yeah. So, so the last submission we did, uh, we asked the total was twenty six thirty, and that that previous design we had one thousand eight hundred fourteen. <laughs> Added on exceeding. Uh, so, so from the previous presentation, we have reduced 814 cubic feet. We we really approve what is what is proposed to do. That's what the variance is for. So it's not we don't give a variance for what's already non-conforming the pre-existing. And so you're saying eight and a half feet is the height that you're going to have um, in the space where you're putting the new addition. Is there any way you can go to eight feet? Um, that's not. I mean, we it's we already lowered it much more than the client was wanted to. So we are really. In, like like this is like see it's a big investment to to build small ceiling height so that's that's like that's i mean we will be i mean we are almost pushing what we can do with this concept in terms of uh, wanting to following the existing building and doing these series of volume and if that's and we even try to change the shape of the 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 shape of the the roof that is protruding but when you look at that side elevation you will start having a it will look very different from from what we are doing right now because if we look at the the northern facade we want to have these smaller houses that kind of kind of grows together to the existing part so yeah we we kind of yeah it has to be almost a new design we have to invent to to please the client also with what we want to achieve so this is the minimum request um that we're able to give we've obviously entertained every other suggestion this board regularly grants pyramid variances in this area on lots very similar to this i've cited to them in my memorandum um, I, this is as low as one as, as I've ever seen, aside from the one on Main Street just prior to this, with under very similar circumstances. Right, but their total of the on that is not even. No, so I mean, what we're adding is 1,000, so that's pretty much what we are building extra. And again, this is a very standard request. This board has granted this type of request and slightly more relief, I would say probably 25 times in the last five years. Yeah. 
This is really in I'd terms like to, of, of I'd like to in terms of sky plane variance, this is not a substantial request at this point. This board regularly grants variances in excess of a thousand dollars. So not under your chairmanship, but prior to right. prior to taking the helm, and they all count as precedent. Um, so I'd like to open it up to the public to see if there's any comments from all. Oh, um, I can use Alex. Alex? No, it looks, I mean, just wanted to confirm because in the agenda, it looks like you're asking for uh, Skyplay variants of 1800 something. And then I think I heard Tiffany at the outset say it's more like eight or 900. I just want to confirm that that latter number is the correct number. No, we reduced it. it we reduced it. To a thousand cubic feet. Oh, a thousand cubic feet. Okay. So we've taken off eight hundred. Oh, so you took off that amount. Okay. So just to be clear, out the existing um, pyramid law in excess it, on the existing structure, I should say, is eight hundred sixteen. Now with the addition of the new building, they're asking for a thousand. So, so, so it'll be a, it'll be a total excess yes. of eighteen hundred something, but part of it is uh, the first eight hundred something is already existing. Uh, so we're talking about an, an additional thousand cubic feet of of uh, excessive sky plane protrusion, right? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So we know we have a narrow lot. We know we have a historical home. Um, we're in the historic district. And we're just trying to see. May, may I see a photo that you had or digital of the. Believed if the I believe the architect has all of that. If you can share some. No, he had one in the last, not 207, where he showed the side. All right, I believe he's still, I think you have a. Yeah. Yes, I have. Uh, yes, uh, you want, can I share my screen here? Yes, hold on, I just have to make you co-host. What is this? Yeah. So, uh, just to confirm, the existing house, I can't read it because it's so tiny, is like 6.2 feet from the property line. Is that right, 6.2? So it's very close to the property You can go ahead and share. Okay, uh, let me just uh, share. That's what I've been forming before. Uh, you see my screen? Yes, hold on one minute. So, so one thing that was also important for the, the design or the client intention as well was to, we wanted to actually to hide the extension from street level. So this is a visualization, what you will see from the, the, the elevation. This would be the west elevation, basically from the road. So we basically, that was also one of the reasons that we wanted to like keep the shape within it. So. So you don't see it from street level, and we think it's a very important view. And then basically this extension will happen as a series coming that is aligned with existing lines or parallel to the existing building lines. Um, so now we're looking very low down. So the building looks very tall, we're very low, but basically this would be the approach we have at the moment. That looks like a traditional Sag Harbor home. I hope that's, so. That's the that's the driveway side, correct? Yeah. No, this is from the inside, uh, from uh, further in. Basically, we we have the driveway. We're basically looking from the no, garage. No, no, but, yes. but it's from the driveway side of the garage. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah, south side. Right. South side. So. We definitely see that you've moved um, 
a further distance away from the north side, which was originally nine and change, and now it's at 13. Um, is it possible to shift the whole building uh, another foot or so uh, south, so then you wouldn't have any pyramid issue? Uh, I mean, the, one of the reasons uh, we will try to explain one of the reasons that it would be difficult is basically we want to create. I mean, already now we originally the concept was that we wanted to have an an access going from the new extension into the existing. So you basically could have uh, almost, and that we already broke now. So that's already something we have to that's not part of we kind of cannot achieve anymore by shifting uh, the building so much so by doing it even more we will basically not be able to create um, access and the these this these rooms are kind of existing now i mean we are building new walls there but it will kind of you basically enter in the middle of of the space so we have it would not be very feasible and the second thing is from the ground floor we will almost shift into I mean there is not much volume left to shift further down it, it we will not read like uh, this much more slimmer volume it will almost start becoming either look like a mistake that it's not a flush with the existing building uh, I mean of course you can move it further I mean but if you look at pl the plan it's really these two volumes that is protruding the rest of the building is within the the pyramid law on the ground floor It just basically looks like you're going to lose one window. I think you can still. Yes, that's 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 exactly another problem. I still think you can still walk through. Um, so yes, I mean the, the our issue is basically not the whole building. So that's the thing. It's just the top part, and it's because of the the angle of the pyramid and the side shape and the the house direction that's pretty much it so i mean if we rotated the building like say 15 degrees uh, so it's parallel with the the property line then we will not have a problem but you will see that would be looked very different if we were just following the red uh, setback line from on the ground floor it's kind of that's kind of the setback is dictating the 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 the, the angle of the building instead of the existing building that we want to follow. I think that's more important in terms of the, the spirit of, of that area and, and the existing house has so much value that we, it's even almost hard to add something to, to this building. So I think to add a new angle to it would be even worse. I don't think the ARB would permit us to pick the house up and move it in any direction. <laughs> no, no. I don't believe it has to move in front of the house. No, that's not an option. So, so initially, the uh, the initial building is nine point six, and they are now going to thirteen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Six point eight. Nine, and it's going to thirteen. Six point two. Uh, I'm not sure which side you're you're playing. Oh, on the, on the close, close side. side. Um, no, it's, it's, it's we're going from six point one or six point nine, six point two, correct. And now it's thirteen point two. Okay, so we're farther right. on the property line than we were in our yes. first submission. It's and the first submission was nine point eight. So now we move farther away from the property line. So. It also does away with our three inch variance. Yes. All right, well, I'll indicate that uh, this is a difficult property, and taking into consideration, I think they would compromise. They went from uh, 6.9 to 13.2. I think uh, we're going to worry about it. I think uh, they both so.
Alex, do you have any thoughts? Is Alex still there? No, I am. Sorry, I just took, I'm uh, eating my dinner. So I just took you uh, off video so you didn't have to watch me. Um, no, I, I'm pretty comfortable with it. I mean, I have a couple of aesthetic concerns, but those are more ARB uh, items than than uh, ZBA issues. So, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not horrified by the uh, by the pyramid uh, violation and uh, requests for uh, a variance here. I guess um, I'm I'm okay with the pyramid variance. I, I I think it's to me the the thing itself is very massive. I think, but that becomes an air issue. issue. Um, I agree. The I mean, we, you know, it is sort of in the range of of um, what. We, Often grant in terms of I'm not sure. In the same context as all of us, especially. I personally am not comfortable with it, but we are a board, so we would vote as a board. Um, so I guess we can um, close. Um, we can close the public hearing for now, and we can um, ask this to a decision. Majority is comfortable with it. Close the public hearing. Yep. So we can make a move to close the public hearing. So move. I second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Liz, we may ask you to uh, draft a decision on the, I guess it's the main variance now is the um, close to 1,000 square feet on the new addition, which will be a total variance of 1,800. No, just a variance for 1,000. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. We need a motion. We need a motion to just take okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I make my uh, one aesthetic comment, uh, or is that kind of out of bounds? Just kind of for for free feedback to the uh, to the applicant. Feel free. Feel free. We, uh, anything is open. Well, and, and it may be, it may have been generic, but in one of the images, I saw a line of not, they're not cypress trees, I forgot what they are, but it's a very, it's a uniform row on both sides of the exact same species of tree. And it may have been just to represent greenery and screen, but if it is meant to be a row of the same species, I would beg you for the sake of Sag Harbor to create a, a more, much more varied and natural looking, uh, Veg, 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 vegetable border, vegetable vegetated border. We, we did. The, no, and then we have a we have a sorry. Plan was approved by the architectural review board. Uh, 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 like that. Yeah, it's what you see on on the plans is what was approved by the ARB. Ooh. Landscaping plan for the property that's there right now. Right? Yes, that's existing. It's already Exist. approved and it's been installed. There. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Now we'll move to uh, 55 hour. Anyone's here with 55 hour? I don't think they're here, so. Okay, we will we can have a second call them. Okay. Uh, so, 152 vision. There's nobody here for yes. There's no one here for 155. We're going to second call it. 
Or do we just adjourn it now? So we can talk just call it again at the end of the night. Maybe they'll come. Uh, is that for 152 division? No, 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 no 55. You're, with, oh, you're sorry. here. So okay. it's Okay, so now we will go to 152 division. Is, uh, is John there? Yes, he is. Okay. He's getting stuff out. Defer to him. I need one of these. Yeah, that's right. I got it. I need to keep it up. Alex, this is email also. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Good evening, board members. And thank you for your patience with this application and working with us. Um, <clears throat> you would ask us to come back and take a look. At reducing the GFA, um, and we have done that. Uh, before I get into the, the nuts and bolts of the numbers and the revised plan, um, I would like to just make a few comments about our efforts here in doing this. Uh, as you know, and from the letter that, that the, the applicant, Alistair and Asia, have, um, have submitted to you, um, this is in no way a speculative house. It's a, it's a traditional house that Asia was raised in a massive leaf. And they are living here and they intend to live here for the rest of their lives with their with their four children. So they are obviously trying to accommodate um, the, the growth of their children and, and the necessity for a few more square feet. Um, our office um, has taken, spent a lot of time since we spoke with you last time. And the survey, by the way, was so close to getting ready for this meeting. Um, I'll have it tomorrow morning that I can email it. That, that, that is current with what we're proposing to you tonight. But I want to say that our office, we feel uh, that this project, obviously we are still asking for a GFA variance. Uh, we have reduced that number substantially down to 192 square feet. Um, and um, what we are doing here is you all know, I believe you've all been to the site and the house, it has a very beautiful and traditional facade right on Houston Street. The rest of the house, as you know, has been kind of a mishmash of different additions, and there's like vinyl siding and plastic casing, and you know, it's just kind of a lot of different different materials that have nothing to do with traditional Sag Harbor. We are obviously changing all of that with our traditional materials. We are tearing up the concrete driveway that's not and putting in grass and pavers, grass and pavers. We are installing a new IA system. We feel that we are taking this building that's been kind of butchered over the years, over the decades, and bringing it back to be um, much more appealing and much more appropriate for the character of the neighborhood in Sac Harbor. In doing so, the necessity for us to ask for this um, GFA variance is that in doing so, we're, we're maintaining the whole front of the house, and it's, it's just very difficult to um, accommodate um, the client's needs in, in, in the architectural sense of laying out the floor plans and kind of making things work, you know, and leaving as much of the front of the house as, as we can. Uh, we feel at the end of the day, the scale of this project, and, um, and thank you for taking these plans at the, at the, at the, at the last hour here, but as, you, as I talk and maybe you flip through, you'll see that the scale of the project has diminished. I think aesthetically it has improved um, by this by this reduction, we have um, we have taken to begin with. We have taken the. I'll start at the back of the house because most of the activity takes place back there, uh, and all of the requested GFA variances take place. We started by, um, and again, I do want to reiterate the new IA system. So environmentally, and I think with the new grasses and stuff, environmentally for Sac Harbor, this will be a benefit um, in that sense as well. Um, getting back to the site plan, we took the patio and the trellis on the back and we slid it back about six feet and reduced it in size. We took the back of the house for the previous scheme and, and pulled that back into one single line. If you look on page A101, you will note that we are the, the 133 square feet uh, addition 
there are two additions on the first floor, as you know. There's a, there's a 133 square foot where we're just kind of filling in and squaring off that volume there. Um, so the 133 square foot is that fill in by the kitchen area, uh, by the patio. And then there's a 51 square feet where we're, in, we're squaring off that north wall um, um, there. And then the majority of our request, um, if you look at page 102, takes place at the at the second at the second floor of of the uh, residence and there we are again really um, a very small footprint change but we are we are filling in on that we call it the northwest corner we should, shall we say and again we've pulled that whole wall in on the second floor you'll note that that wall is pulled back further we'll call the backyard the west wall the, the, the west wall second floor plan is pulled back even further than the first floor diminishing the scale there as well um, we have proposed a little outdoor terrace up above the first floor portion there and um, if you look at the elevations um, <clears throat> if you look at the elevations you will note that we are in keeping with the previous schemes and working as best we can to appreciate the vernacular and the architecture of this historic district. Um, we all know that we did the hipped roof. Um, honestly, we would have preferred to have a gable at the north end there, but we did the hipped roof to accommodate the sky plane uh, better, which we did. And you will also note that this, and, uh, and on the western wall, we maintained the gable there on the backyard wall, but that's become, um, Small area there as well. Um, we, um, in doing so here, we have again we've reduced the coverage on the site. We've reduced the building coverage from the previous scheme. We have reduced the pyramid, the sky plane uh, request. You, as we know, you have already granted the previous coverages and the sky plane variances. So. This, if this is approved, this determination will, will be even diminished from what was approved previously by this board. Um, again, we are going to propose, we're basically maintaining a lot of the, 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 the windows, the scale, the proportions, the divided lights. Um, um, and we are um, as well trying to maintain really the same same palette and the same vocabulary throughout the building so that we feel from the, from the neighbor side it's going to be much more enjoyable to look across the fence and see this building than what's there currently. We're proposing against shingle siding and a shingle roof. Um, and, uh, that's 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 where we are. So um, we have um, again that was that was our work since we saw you last time, and you'll see it's become even more of a modest proposal um, in, in footprint and in um, and in elevation and in section, et cetera, in scale, in volumetric scale, it's been used, obviously. So um, we would appreciate you approving this. Um, we know we know it is an ask, obviously, um, but considering all the, the, the benefits to the neighborhood and um, environmentally with the GYA system, um, we would ask that you consider this for approval. Can I just add as well, thank you, John, for that. Um, can I just add as well that per the um, letter you may have uh, managed to read via email, hopefully, um, we have the support of our neighbours on both sides. In fact, they were supportive of the previous round of plans. Um, this is obviously now a reduced version that John's presenting, um, but they're both, both very supportive of the project and um, what we're trying to accomplish, just so you know. Yeah, thank you. I didn't mention that. Thank you. The most effective, obviously. So certainly we um, appreciate that support from the neighbors as well as um, making the changes, uh, whether it be the driveway or the ice. Mm -hmm. These are all things that um, are welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the, and clearly you have reduced the amount of a GFA request. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really something that we would ask you to really think again about do you need to still have the GFA? Um, because we really, it's not something that we can take lightly. Um, you see, 
the other half of the team tonight um, had asked for it and have um, made changes mm -hmm. and and found compromise to mm -hmm. to address it. Right. So right. Um, and, and not to say that you haven't worked very hard and in uh, looking at all the angles and things. It's just uh, something I mean, we can obviously continue to discuss. And I want to hear what all the board has to say. Um, but it's something that since the new laws were put in place, um, and I know you have given the example of 33 Henry, I believe is that um, there is some additional, but not where the board um, approved. It wasn't intentionally approved. I, I mean, no vote on it. Um, I guess one problem with it is um, it sets a precedent and we could avoid that if there was some unique characteristic to the property to distinguish it from other properties so that nobody else could do this because once we do it, everyone is going to want to do it. It's just what happened with the pyramid law, any of the laws. And I really can't think of any way to distinguish this parcel from any other parcel. It's not a unique shape. It's not a really narrow tiny, tiny parcel, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to figure out a way to just, if you can figure out a way to distinguish it, you can certainly listen to that. But, you know, usually the reasons we give variances are for difficult sites, like, you know, a building on top of a short line sure, sure. or the property's only 20 feet wide or it's a triangle or, or some odd, odd condition and there really isn't any odd I mean that I can see I mean and we're welcome to hear whatever you might give us in terms of feedback in that regard um, it's, it's hard to distinguish it and once we do it it's like okay well this is I don't remember the number you asked for one whatever 192. It is, 192. 192 so then the next step is well we're asking for 400 it's only a little bit more then it's 600 and 800 and 1,000, you know, it just, that's what happened with the pyramid law, which is why, I mean, Tiffany mentioned the law was changed. The reason the law was changed was to reset the law so that the old precedents went away, so that there was a new law, and then new precedents were set. Um, and we're, we're sort of stuck with the precedents that have been set, even for that new law, but um, that's kind of where we are. Um, Scott? Oh, yeah, good. I just want to just confirm the, the precedent that you're citing that you're particularly concerned about is the is the GFA variant. Yes, it's all, it's all about the GFA um, because we've never in the past this board hasn't granted um, approval for uh, variances for GFA, and in fact, most of the communities out here, if I'm not mistaken, don't. I mean, it's not to say we wouldn't in some cases. But there has to be a compelling reason to do it. And wow. just because the family needs more space, I mean, correct Liz, just because the family needs more space or the owner wants more space no, I isn't a, a compelling reason for us to stand at the core. Sure, I understand that. That's correct, because the variance runs with the land and the property, not the people who own it. So yeah. their needs are not considered in your weighing of the balancing test. Because you could sell it. We make a That's decision right. tonight, you can sell it tomorrow. And no, as, you, as you know my background, so I've right. been there done that. So my answer to your, my response would be the uniqueness as far as what our office would like to think is the uniqueness of this building is, is, is that unique, not in a good way, the whole back of the house, as I've said, if you will, there is a mess kind of, it's a mess of architecture of materials and everything. And lots of little add ons all along. Yeah, vinyl siding and plastic and just junk. And, I mean, pardon my French, but you know. And, but um, we would feel that the uniqueness of this, of this application is that we are really only adding a small amount to the footprint and we're just filling in with the architecture. Now, we did go and look at a conforming scheme, and that conforming scheme would coincidentally, to knock the 192 off, it would mean knocking the second bedroom. 
off on the um, on the second floor, um, and um, and that obviously with the, that's the one with the hip roof over it. And if we were compelled to do that, um, really what it would mean is that would become a covered porch. Okay, so that roof would remain, it would become a covered porch, it would be all the code. We wouldn't have to come back to you. But our request is that the only difference as far as the, the, you know, giving us this variance would be really mostly filling in that, enclosing that covered porch, basically. And we think aesthetically and architecturally, it's, it's better for the village. And we obviously feel that this whole project is better for the village for all the reasons I stated. Um, um, can so I just ask, though, is, I'm just trying to see where the second bedroom is. Is that in the rear? It's in the rear on the north uh, west corner. Yeah. Okay. Second floor plan. That... I mean, that's one of the odd things about the JFA law is that the porches are not included. It can have a roof over it. It's open. So it's right. not included in the JFA. Yeah, so, it shouldn't be. <laughs> right. I mean, it is in, we understand why. No, no, we understand. Yeah. Um, I think you all should think about your GFA rules because in East Hampton, GFA starts, I and mean, this is just on the side for you as a board, um, and for the town for your village board perhaps to consider with the attorney, is that in, in, in other municipalities, you have you go up to five feet, anything under five feet on, 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 the, on the sidewall is not counted because you don't have it. In South Hampton, I believe it's seven feet. So I called Chris Talbot, I put an email in and, and, and left a diagram with him. And uh, you know, the, the letter of your law states it goes to the exterior place of the of the place, but in a way it's really not fair to a lot of different situations right. because you could have a six inch, you know, you could have a plate on the roof and a, and a mm -hmm. roof going up and you're only using the center of it, you being taxed for all the GFA. So you may want to think about well, those that at that particular issue actually was brought up when they formed the law and they didn't act upon it. but i agree with you because you could have a full two story exactly with 10 to with five five walls, and it's the same gfa as something that's a one, one, and, a one and a half story exactly. which doesn't make any sense at all i agree, I agree. um but that's how the law, unfortunately that's how they wrote the law they didn't take it yeah. that into account because most municipalities do it doesn't mean you can't change it but no. <laughs> but that's definitely it's for the discussion yeah you know, that's Thank definitely you. Uh, fair to point that out not a good thing in the law. It encourages, it actually encourages people to do full second stories exactly. because there's no difference. Right, and we even have low, lower break lines, lower right. on this on this project. And then, so, we so again, the reason I mentioned the screen porch, the conforming thing is, you know, really the only difference between this variance that that would be enclosing that second floor porch that. We could we can build as of right and um and, and making it better, you know. Right. And again, for the village, we think you know, we think this is a benefit. The whole project is a benefit, especially the scale back project, because it takes away any massiveness that might have been there in the volumes. And just to, just to add, you know, of course, I understand your concerns about president and everyone else, you know, jumping on and wanting to have the same exemptions. I fully understand what you're trying to manage as a board i just think what i was trying to emphasize with the context of this situation is it's not like we're you know ask you know asking a thousand square feet we're pushing out making some massive extension and building you know increasing the footprint of the house in a very big way this is really what it comes down to is much more as, as john described just we either have a bigger deck and bigger porch or or we can use that uh, use that space and i architecturally for the village for the neighbors i don't think there's any material benefit from um from us you know being 100 percent conforming here um i think it actually to be honest i think it looks worse um uh, with a larger upstairs deck and porch but um anyway we're grateful for your uh, for your assessment and your decision Initiation. 
uniqueness. The uniqueness yeah. because um, and I think the whole back the uniqueness I'll say again is I think the whole back of the house what this is doing for the village overall and for the neighbors. So what is your total gross floor area now? Total gross is um, on the front page. I have this chart on many of the sheets. Yeah, uh, I think it's three thousand sixty three. It's um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's see. Um, the difference is one hundred ninety two square foot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Existing is 2567, proposed is now 3063, and allowed under the GFA rule is 2871. So, we're, we're it's, over it's, 192 square feet. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not that the, they've done a very good job of shrinking what the ask is. It's, it's the unfortunate thing that there is still an ask for the GFA, where, um, uh, as Scott pointed out, if we could. Justified in some way that this is something that wouldn't set a precedent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we would be willing to pass a little bit. It's just, um, it's not a precedent that we need to do this in general. Not in uniqueness, but in general. Just, you know, um, can I just ask a question? I mean, this may be a, a stupid question, but can I just ask a question? I, I've heard that sometimes there is some flexibility of around 200 square feet um, for mechanicals. Um, you know, in our situation here, mechanicals are, we are intending to have in the basement. Obviously, you know, basement space doesn't count towards GFA. I just wondered if there's, with that point of sort of uh, where mechanicals are, if there's any flexibility that, that you could consider. Uh, that is part of your decision. Well, if you, you have to if, use the building inspector with a specific plan, right? Right. Yeah, but no, he makes a good point. We could just, if I can jump in for a second, first. Yeah, if you made a room. So, yeah. so it, 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 exactly. If, if, if on the first floor, if one of the rooms became a mechanical, we that would be before you. That would free, that would free us. 200, yeah, because that would you're free up that space. Square foot exactly. We're asking 192. Right. Yeah. So, architecturally, I mean, I'm, I'm pushing towards the uniqueness here as just yet another component, perhaps, that by by granting this, we wouldn't be changing anything. It's for, we wouldn't be changing anything except for calling a bedroom mechanical, but it's a mechanical equipment on the first floor, which obviously we don't want to do. Um, but you're not allowed. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, we could have a 200 square foot mechanical room. No, you could if you were actually going to have it. No, that's what I'm saying. As long as you're going to have it. No, I'm not saying call. I don't mean call. Oh, okay. I'm saying we reuse yeah. it then. It would be no, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that is actually correct. Right. So the whole how the project wouldn't change whatsoever, except for inside the house, it'd be a big mechanical room instead of another bed. And that would free up that space. So if if you want to look at that as. Well, we'd be losing a bed. So it wouldn't help us any. See what I mean? Well, how many bedrooms do you have now? Well, they, there is, we, we're proposing five. Uh, we're propo I'm sorry, we're proposing, I couldn't mention that was on the tip of my tongue. We have one proposed at the first, um, so at the five. first floor, correct? Yeah, and it's a total of five. And the four children and the parents. And the space pop back, right? Where there's bedrooms in the back. No, that's a cottage, yes. Yeah. Yes. That would be for grandma and grandpa or something like that, I guess. You can get over. Right. Um, oh. Clearly, if, 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 if doing something with mechanical, can make space, you can make a bedroom in the basement. I mean, change that. You know, we talked about that, I think, before. And I think you said that maybe that was. Yeah, too hard to it wouldn't even, even meet the code for headroom in some of the basement. It's, it's all, it's just really, it's really a dirt basement, kind of old. You can imagine what it's like down there, you know, it's kind of when you want to sleep. Right. Just like, trying to think of it. Also, yeah, no, I appreciate it, but yeah. I guess the point is, if we pulled mechanicals up to the ground floor and we did put some sort of bedroom or other room down in the basement, um, that would be a, allowable from your perspective, but architecturally it doesn't change anything on the outside of the house in terms of what neighbours in the village and the history and anything. It wouldn't make any difference, right? Yes, it just right. makes a difference in the, in the 
right. It's just the way the law. Oh, it's a technical difference. It's not an actual aesthetic difference. Yes, it's just the way the law is written. Um, I mean, I have had in other jurisdictions, I have had clients do that, put a camera upstairs, but they didn't have a long enough to accomplish a certain yeah. physical space. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Alex, did you have anything we would get back to you? Did you have any thoughts? Well, if it's any, I mean, just to confirm, it's I did, the idea that seems to be on the table to get this uh, GFA down to zero is to put a, one of the bedrooms down in the basement. Is that correct? And that's because the basement oh, is not included in the GFA. We're not, we're not entertaining that. Oh, you're not. Okay. Hypothetical. Okay, hypothetical. But right, but that but we were talking about that hypothetically. Yes. Yes. Okay, and that just to confirm, Scott, um, that that would not count against the GFA, correct? So they, that would be a way to, to, to solve the problem. Yeah, basements and porches don't count. And you're allowed 200 square feet of mechanical space. It does not count. I don't think there are any other exceptions, are there? I think, no. I think that that's it. Give me a sec. Yeah, so my only comment is um, to Alistair, which is that I'm having, if I ever have the money, I'm thinking of adding some bedrooms and I'm gonna be forced to do them probably uh, in my basement, uh, at least some of them. Um, so I'm sympathetic, but I think that can be done actually in a pretty interesting way where you bring in a lot of light and, and make it a legitimate bedroom. Uh, but I am, I'm sympathetic with the, with the constraints, but, um, but I don't think that it's the end of the world to have to put a, especially a kid's room um, down in the basement if you have a lot of light. Um, secondly, I would just say, you know, I, I, this is a dilemma because there's no question that John and Alistair are gonna make this house a much nicer house than it is currently and that it's been for a long time. I'm sure it's gonna be aesthetically very nice um, and ditto with the landscaping and so on. So we wanna in general encourage improvements to old houses that aren't kind of looking their best at this point. So we don't wanna be in a position of discouraging you, but, but understand our position, which is that there is no precedent for allowing a GFA variance. And that puts us in a pretty impossible position because we don't want this to be the first one that we do, which becomes a slippery slope. And then suddenly everybody wants GFA variances. So it's unfortunate for you, but for me, I, I just don't see per Scott's point, unless there's something that really makes this property unique. And it doesn't seem to me that there does, um, you know, there's lots of crappy houses that could be really improved if somebody puts some money into them. I don't think that's unique. Um, so without that, I, I, I'm, I'm inclined to vote against the GFA variance here and just urge you guys to go back to the drawing board again. And again, I know you have a lot of kids and, and you want to find a place for them all. And obviously that's a real issue, but again, that's beyond our ability to regulate. We have to kind of look at this property as a property without owners and without regard to who the owners are. <laughs> So the GFA does exclude uh, porches, patios, decks, open terraces, and other such open structures, cellars, attics, which do not qualify as habitable space, any detached accessory buildings and structures on the same lot, and any areas used solely for mechanical equipment not to exceed 200 square feet. So so you, didn't, you didn't, did you say basement or no? Sellers, yeah. Sellers. Sellers. Sellers, but you said that weren't used for habitable space, right? No, that's attics, not used for habitable space. Oh, Sellers okay. are excluded. Okay, even if there's a bedroom down there? Yes. Okay. It was really yeah, so for that reason, that is an out. That's a way for you guys to do this. You know, and you just put the youngest kid down there or whatever, the oldest kid down there. <laughs> um, you know, that is that seems to me a viable option. It's not ideal but it's viable, lots of people do it. I'm thinking of doing it. So I think there are other ways to solve your issues without making us you know, create a new precedent that, that we're gonna regret. Well, we very much appreciate all the effort you've done and all the things that you proposed to do. Yeah. Um, we, we're in agreement with all that and 
I, I do commend you for the decrease from 44,120 gross or square feet to 32 and only 190. But the precedent is there, and you can make the changes and make it uh, functional for you when you can, or you when you have. I would just add too. I just want to express my, my condolence too for the fact that you guys did reduce it a lot. You made a lot of effort to get get us close to zero, and it's frustrating. It must be so frustrating that we're talking about 192 feet and uh, square feet, and and that's an issue. But again, it's just the precedent. This would be the first time we'd ever agreed to any variance. Okay. Um, thank you all. We appreciate all your efforts as well. Uh, so what we would request now is that simply that we will be moving forward with a conforming building permit set, you know, and we certainly, Liz, would be request that our variances for the, that have already been, for the, the initial bridge and the sky plane have been approved, that they are maintained in, in consideration when we move forward with the building department, that they're on the record. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, have, you don't have a written decision from this board. That's what we're requesting. Well, that's okay. What, oh, yeah. Want, okay. So that's what we're requesting. Okay. So you're going to withdraw I mean, the GFA approve. request. You're going to exactly. withdraw the GFA request and move forward with the other variances. Exactly. Okay. And they already have been approved to a greater extent than what we're asking today. They were they were voted. We have the minutes and the, the board. Oh, made you a motion. Mean, yes, yes, but I haven't drafted anything. Right. So you, yeah, you have to wait for a written decision no, before you can yeah, and it yeah, has to be voted yeah. on before you can actually move forward with your building. Okay, okay. but just for the record, we're all clear that a greater well, coverage. We have to talk variance, to them about that. Not me. <laughs> well, they know they approved it by motion. So we had a greater coverage variance than what's here. We had a greater sky plan variance than what's here that you approved and, and, by motion. And so what we will do yeah, is sure. we will. Ask for that decision to be written once yeah. we close the public and we, we completely follow yeah. what you're requesting. Just to be clear, though, you're requesting variances for the new proposal, not what was previously approved. Yeah, if you if Liz is writing it up, we're fine with writing it up for what we have. Um, what we have what you've just proposal. recently proposed. Exactly. OK, exactly. so okay. we will make sure that yeah, um, and, and Liz, I might go through my numbers again to make sure I've got it all correct with the scheme. And if there's any difference, yeah, then yeah, yeah. we will need a. I, can, can we do this without having a survey? Actually, we'll, we need we'll, to need, wait? we'll have a survey by tomorrow morning. No, no, I know, but can we? Uh, this question for Liz: uh, can, We don't really have a survey <laughs> right now. Are your numbers based on the on the most recent survey? The numbers that you're asking for the relief do you have the specific relief well the survey is conforming my numbers my my numbers here mm -hmm. and we'll have that for you tomorrow probably but your so numbers represent pretty much we, they should be within a square foot or something like a few yeah yes they represent these represent because what i did is we took the existing coverage numbers right and then i backed out what we reduced and just did the math right. so uh, so what so yes saying? i would say yes these all reflect and the sky plane again i Back out the cubic footage that we reduced in all of those different categories. And so what we'll do is, if your survey comes in tomorrow and it matches, mm -hmm. you'll get your written decision. Great. If it's different, they're going to have to approve that. Okay. Great. So what we see right here um, from your notes is proposed building coverage of two thousand one hundred twenty square feet for nineteen point five percent, and then the maximum lot cover proposed would be. 2,730, which would be 25.1 for the revised survey. So those would be the numbers that Liz would focus on. Mm -hmm. And we would, once we um, see the survey, we'll make sure that they're in agreement right. with those requests. Mm -hmm. so the plus pyramid here. Plus the pyramid. Right. right. Then what is the kind of, I don't know what, on here. yeah, what is the pyramid now with revisions? I'm not sure. We'll see it. I don't think that was part of it. On the front cover sheet, I believe this is all correct. On the front cover sheet, the what I've given you today, right. you see that we have existing non-conforming cubic footage, and then we have proposed 
826 is what we're asking there. In this scheme, it was greater, obviously, before. Right. 826. Yeah, it was greater than that before. And then the coverage um, has, has been diminished as well. Right. Okay. Just, we just, um, before we go, is, is there anyone here from the public that would like to discuss 152 Division Street? Before we close the open here, there's no hands up. So I think we okay, we're clear, right? We have to make a motion to close the public. Yes. Um, so if we could make a motion to close the public hearing. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now we will ask um, Liz to drop the decision um, <laughs> highlighting what was approved. As we've discussed, the vote pyramid the, and the live coverage and the building coverage with the most recent. Yeah, that would be great. If you could go back and make note that, that the greater numbers were approved and these are the current numbers that you are approving. Or, 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 yeah. we, we, will, okay. we will look for that to be in the decision right. and then we'll vote on that um, next month right. um, and we'll look at the survey to be sure. consistent with what these numbers are. Sure. You probably don't need me to be here at that meeting, do you? No, you do not. Neither. So we'll take a vote on asking this to do this decision. Um, Joe, you in favor? Okay. I'm okay. Scott? Okay. I'm in favor. And Alex? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, okay. can I just ask a clarifying question ask. to John? So John, so so you're so you're not asking for the GFA variance, which means that you're going to amend the plans in some way to get that to zero. Yes, okay. correct. Thank you. John, can you send me an email or carry an email to that effect that you're withdrawing that part of the application for sure. our worker? Thank sure. you. Sure. And I can put it on a Word document. Yeah. And send it along. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Great. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you for all your work. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was well, John. So Thanks, Alex. Quickly and quietly. Um, so we just do need to actually have a motion um, for Liz to write the decision as discussed. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. Now we are. 26 Walker. 26 Walker. Um, as you know, um, we were before you back in July. Um, the original notice was for a GFA variance and a variance for a proposed pool house of 200 square feet. Um, at the last hearing, we withdrew the request for the pool house and we provided revised plans. So, as stated, we are not requesting that relief. Um, but we are still here before you for the requested GFA variance. And um, we had submitted a memorandum of law, revised plans, and revised survey, which I'm kind of laid out the, the basis for our request. But um, in some, I kind of as you, you know, you're looking through for your concerns, could be a speculative house that could be flipped and sold, and you don't want to create precedent. And from here, we have a, a you know a family that's trying to establish a a generational um, kind of dream for theirs that's going to allow them to live with their family and their mother who suffers from rheumatoid arthritis and um, can't readily and uh, regularly go up and down stairs. It's kind of led to an expansive floor plan, as we explained at the first hearing. And also, as stated in my memorandum, and I've provided a similar issue with looking for the Bills of North Haven Zoning Board of Appeals. And in that case, it was for a child who was suffering from autism and kind of needed space for his um, you know, rehabilitation, training, and, and so forth. And um, based on that medical need, the board found that was a distinguishable characteristic that could allow them to approve the GFA variance, which to my knowledge is the only one that was granted in our game to date. Um, you know, we certainly appreciate what we're asking of you, and we heard what you said at the last application, but I think as we set forth in our submissions and our presentations to date that, um, you know, we truly are coming to you with the, the minimal relief necessary for our applicants to 
accomplish their dreams and goals with this property. Um, we provided substantial amounts of letters and support, um, which is clear evidence that there's going to be no detriment to the neighborhood. Um, now they're part of the fabric of the community. They know the community. Um, they've approached this with a community mindset. Um, it's also a couple points I just want to note again for the record. The property currently is pre-existing non-conforming with respect to front yard setbacks and lock coverage both of which we've removed in our efforts through our application before you. So we're again trying to reduce the amount of non-conforming on the property. Um, we're also going to be installing an IA septic system and removing a conventional septic system so there will be an environmental benefit to the property. And, um, happy to answer any specific questions you have. We can walk through the layout of the floor plans that kind of lead to why we have the plan we have before us. That, as I stated, it's too loud for their mother and the applicants are here, by the way. They traveled here and want to face the application just to, again, show that we're not, you know, some speculative builder trying to get a large house and, and flip it. So I know that's ultimately the concern. And again, we're trying to create a space that can allow for the mother to have um, the space she needs to come to live and, and live out the rest of her life with her family and allow for there to be and also a space for them to be next to their mother that they can have the two spaces on the first floor with all the common amenities on the first floor. This property has um, unique grade and it was kind of designed in a way that can give her all of the ability she needs to have a functioning life and a, and a comfortable life in this property and, and enjoy it with her family. So, uh, let me pick up on that. Yeah, uh, of course. So discussing the house and if you're, if you're familiar with the main move, which was Originally, the house is, or currently, the house is elongated on the site. I need the name. Person, right? Oh, oh Dave Overton. Excuse me. I'm Dave Overton, the architect. He was, he I was, was born in last. Correct. Right. Um, yeah. So, um, we, uh, we essentially wanted to make a larger house for this family. They're my neighbors. They, we care about the neighborhood and we care about the characteristics of the neighborhood. Obviously, there's a lot of discussion about houses and as uh, rest and, um, and maintaining the integrity uh, to fit the scale of the properties. Um, I find it a very passionate uh, motivation of mine to maintain that aesthetic. So designing a house uh, that is on a larger, prop a larger property in the neighborhood um, that could essentially be a elongated bar, uh, meet the GFA, and be very prominent and loud, physically, volumetrically, uh, to the perspective one from the street, from any neighbor. I, that was the, the fundamental move to not have that happen. So the house is broken into essentially two parts, so that we are both meeting a sky plane condition. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but trying to essentially make the house appear smaller, um, regardless of GFA, on the property, which has uh, got topography that's fairly dramatic. So when reading uh, through the, the zoning uh, code site last time, we talked about where the sky plane starts. Um, we have done an adjustment to the house design by bringing the entire house down, the ridge line down, and the proposed revised drawings. So that's the main change to these drawings is that the house, um, the south section dropped down about a foot, and the north section dropped down at about four feet. They have a matching ridge line now, and the overall profile of the house uh, is lower on the site. That not only uh, responds to meeting the sky plane uh, datum point, which we determined was the adjacency datum uh, to define a point on the property as it is a site. Um, and uh, so, but we brought the whole house down. And that was also in response to the ARB's comments, which were uh, they liked the house, they appreciated it aesthetically. They felt because of the site being on a hill, if we could bring it down a little bit, that's literally the words from the, the board. So we did. Uh, and we felt that both that accommodates them and this board. Um, furthermore, talking about just why the house needs this extra square footage, we are trying to put an entire family on essentially one floor. Um, uh, so we have with all the things that make a house function in between. Um, so that's essentially where we ended up with the size of the house by the footprint of the, of the, of the site or of the house on the site based on the setback lines and the diagonal uh, sky plane encroachment 
not going into Croatia. Um, so the house became a certain uh, you know, footprint for the full layout on that first floor to um, accommodate for them. So essentially, we're, we're trying to create um, you know, a, a full house on one floor um, and, uh, and accommodate the fact that the, the site really does have some topography and try to alleviate the visible, visible nature of it volumetrically. Also, uh, just to note, we added the renderings as requested. So we put a uh, front and rear yard rendering uh, to give a, on the last page of the uh, video, a better visualization of which one had it on the hand. Uh, they're here. Yeah, all right, all right. I can attempt to use technology to so just so the board, just for the boards, you know, so you're aware, obviously the North Haven case is not precedent setting for your board. He's just using it as an example. So um, I did actually call the um, head of the North Haven zoning board and had a conversation with him this morning. Um, and he said they really didn't approve increasing the GFA. They only increased the pre-existing um, pyramid law uh, and that's the piece that they, they did. So I, I read your piece and asked them the question. Um, and that was so responsive. Okay. And what he was saying, I think, was that the, 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 over, the pre-existing overage on GFA and they were approving additional pyramids, is right. what he was saying. In addition, or in accepting the GFA. In, in accepting the GFA that was already there is what they were doing. Or regardless, it has no bearing on this right. board's decision. Right. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to show that somewhere in this general area was dealt with. I also remind you that you're here as a relief valve. The code is here, we appreciate the code, but may have to at some point consider the, the benefit of the applicant versus the in the neighborhood, which is, you know, the burden we're tasked with and the show you have, I think we put forth an application that and with the support of the community that I don't think we're creating any any detriment to the neighborhood. I think there's enough of a distinguishable factor here that you can rely on given the circumstances of the applicant. But they're not allowed to consider the personal convenience of an applicant. So the courts have long held that. So I don't see how they can rely on that legally. And that's a problem. So if you could distinguish it in some other way, that would be helpful. The other problem is that I mean it's an area that's ripe for overdevelopment and once we approve this if we can't distinguish it in some way you know that every single developer that goes through that area is going to want to max ask us for more <laughs> because the houses in that area are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's a big problem and in fact they created a the culture the over the cultural the district you have a help. to help prevent that so it's it's difficult for us to do this unless there's some specific unique characteristic that we could apply to this, which unfortunately I don't really see because it's a big square lot. And, Granted, there and is the topography, but, but, but then that's you know taking down you are able to. I mean, it gives you an ad. The unfortunate thing about the topography is that it gives you more opportunity to use the basement as habitable space, which doesn't count for GFA. So um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's another. And I guess it's GFA now, but you said you had decreased it. Decreased it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. Know the existing GFA it, it is increased because it's a one story house on, over a basement. Yeah. So I think the footprint of the existing house is just under 3,000. Yeah. Footprint at present. Right. Yeah. And, and you're asking now to, to uh, 657 square feet over the allowable. Um, can I just ask though? I see that there is an elevator in part of the house. So I am. Um, and I understand you're trying to have separate space, and but so if the if stairs are the issue, and you have the elevator, is that something? Well, it's a great element. Is any other feasible way to get to the first floor? Okay. We're trying not to make the house taller or bigger on the second floor. 
we're keeping it pretty limited for two bedrooms on the second floor, or to the side that, that right. has this has more uh, skyline potential. This, can I ask you a question? And this is just my ignorance about the the accessory apartment law. I don't know if that's law yet. Or it is. It is. I wanted to ask. So, is there some way that they could utilize that law to either break? what they need out of the house so that it's a detached building and then the yeah they should look at that out. code section and, and talk to chris and well, see if they can come up with something thank you for bringing that up and it's been rolling in our minds although i think at the last meeting it wasn't long no it was, it was. And it is now okay. it's codified so, so um I'm it's a much easier process it doesn't require a public hearing before planning anymore you don't have to go to planning it's just to go to building and, and make sure it meets everything. And if you need a variance, you come here for a variance. We designed it in anticipation for this. Uh, we know the overlay is uh, also thinking about the fact that we need the potential for apartments in Sky Harbor. But um, the uh, so we'll look into that because it is designed to be able to have its own entrance and it has its own you know integrity as an apartment, as a unit. We just didn't want to go there because we honestly really want to develop this house uh, for this family specifically and have it function and architecturally aesthetically and also just functionally layout wise uh, work for this family and also just as a house. Um, um, if, but they could be connected. I mean, you may just need to think outside the box yep. here. If it was, if I don't know, and this is a question, Liz, if it was connected below grade, and the existing building up above was um, separated. It is I guess it, that wouldn't be considered an accessory, right? Yeah, I mean, accessory is usually separate. Separate. Totally separate. separate. Yeah. It's, it's I don't know. I think that you should talk to um, Chris. It's also Chris. the use that makes it accessory too, right? Right. So yeah, you really should meet with the building inspector and talk to him about these things. Take a look at the code, of course. Yeah, look at it closer. And we did do a neighborhood analysis, I'm sure you saw to show yeah. that despite the bombings won't be the biggest house or the most developed lot in the neighborhood. But I, I, I was just gonna say I think though that if all of the neighbors really understood that us approving this creates this precedent for everybody else to do the same thing, I think that they would be thinking again about. Their position. I don't know. I guess the precedent is is this the precedent or is this a specific purpose for this specific family? So, so we can't go there. I, well, forget the family part. This site working with. Well, but um, unless there's a, a specific thing that we can call out in the site to make it a unique site in Sag Harbor, um, which is difficult, as I said, because it's not narrow, it's not a triangle, it's not you know tiny it's it's a big square lot and i don't know if that, no, i don't no, know if alex we, does any no, i mean and clearly uh, we we do value that having the neighbor support i systems going in we looked at the different um options it could do so it does sound that if by doing the separate piece you could get that to work then you could satisfy all parts um, as opposed to asking for relief on 657 for the GFA. Would moving the, the uh, garage that is not really, uh, it is really part of the seller. I did talk to Chris Powell about that, so he understands that totally garage is still a good part of the seller's place. So. It's not part of the GFA. It's not part of the GFA currently anymore. Well. I mean, you can enter in that way, but I guess. It's it's just, yeah, it can't. We don't want to necessarily turn that into a bedroom, for example, or or living shifts space. mechanical space around. Um, yeah, if you have to have a car go upgrade, I don't think that would do any benefit to the neighborhood because now it's sunk in, it's the screens, you know, these cars aren't over power on the drive. I think it's a way about screen I mean, in comparison to the house that's there, this is very admirable in terms of the character. It's an interesting the difficulty is the 
I think it's an interesting gray area between aesthetics and just volume and design. You could design a bar and it would be a horrible addition to the neighborhood and to Sag Harbor. You could do some pretty awful things and still meet the GFA. Uh, but the design aesthetic and volumetrically aesthetic uh, presentation of this building against the world, um, we've tried everything we could possibly do to build a, a gorgeous home and a very unique home. Um, and uh, with the host of people are uh, recognizing the, the, the effort and the interest of designing a house that is unique, specific to the site, to create a home that functions properly. Alex, did you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to weigh in if I can, just because I have to actually uh, depart a little early tonight. So these will be my last comments, if it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm very sympathetic with the applicant and obviously the uh, the elderly woman and, and making sure she's got the space she needs and is comfortable and so on. Uh, I can understand easily why that's a, a very important priority. I have an older mother myself, um, so I understand that well. Um, but again, uh, it just seems impossible for us, uh, for reasons that other board members have mentioned, for us to make an exception here. There doesn't seem to be enough enough to distinguish this case because we can't take into account uh, who the applicant is uh, per se. Um, and so I would, my vote, if I'm being asked to give a straw indication, would be to turn down the request for the GFA variance uh, on the pool house. I'll just briefly say I'd want to learn more from Scott and others, uh, Liz and others, what the precedent is there on pool houses and variances there. I don't think we've, I don't recall <laughs> that variance too often come before us, but as a general nature, I'm, I'm more comfortable with that one uh, just because, especially if there's existing buildings, 200 square feet, um, you know, is, uh, is, is a number. Uh, but if, if there's an existing building there that you're working with, uh, one can understand why you might go over that number. So I'd be interested to learn more about that. I apologize if you uh, did address that already and I, and I somehow missed it. But uh, Madam Chairwoman, um, unless you need a vote or taking a vote in the next couple of minutes, uh, I'm afraid I have to excuse myself. So we can we could take a vote now, or if you want to go and see what your other options are. Um, it's, it's. I think we should be able. I think it's pretty clear where you're going to vote. Yeah, I like to explore the accessory department. Yeah, I think uh, there's a solution there yeah. with the accessory department, um, and I would take advantage of it because I think you could solve your problem. I mean, it's it's. It's just sort of a crazy technical problem. And I think that you can probably figure out a way to circumvent the, 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 the GFA problem by utilizing that because it exists now and it's, it's actually what you need. Right. Yeah. And, and clearly we are all in favor of families staying together and working together and appreciate all that very much. That is the goal. Yeah. Yeah, and and that, that I think is at least in part the express purpose of that accessory apartment law. Uh, at least in part, to allow families to stay together. So, anyway, and I mentioned, I, I meant to mention that as well. That, that sounded like a good suggestion from Scott, and I'd be curious to see what you guys find out, see if that addresses your, your issue. Okay, great. We'll look forward to hearing from you. We just need to open for the next year. So, we can adjourn. Can adjourn. Yes, we can have a motion to adjourn it to the October.
right, so now we're going to move to new business uh, to Rice. Open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. I so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, um, good evening, Brian Locasio with the Adam Miller Group, attorney for the applicant. Um, property is located at 68 Bryson Street. Property is located in the R20 zoning district. It is an undersized lot at 12,457 square feet. Um, the lot is also non conforming with respect to lot width, having a road frontage along Bryson Street of 77 feet, where a minimum width of is 100 feet. Um, the property is also burdened by two front yards, um, Love Lane and uh, Bryson Street. Um, the applicant is um, before you to, as part of their application to propose a modest 900 square foot user addition to the existing home, um, an extension of the existing covered front porch, which that does not require any relief, and a construction of a new rear deck with pergola above. In order to accomplish this, we're here with three variances. Uh, first one is a setback from um, Love Lane of 5.7 feet or 14.3 feet or 20 is required. Um, a pyramid variance of 250 cubic feet and a lot covered variance of 4.9 feet. Um, it is a total of 29.9 percent, where 25 is required. Um, as stated, this um, lot is a pre existing non conforming lot with respect to lot size and lot width. Uh, the property is currently improved with a house, porch, pool, uh, patio, uh, retaining wall, and slate. And, um, Brown walkways, um, all of which are legally pre existing non conforming um, with respect to the love lane setback. And there is an existing um, pyramid encroachment. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, so, um, as stated, this lot is unique in that it has two front yards um, and it, it is non conforming with respect to size of lot width. Um, this application was also before the ARB for a discussion item because we want to go before them as it is an historic district that has some um, historic factors to the house. Um, taking their comments into consideration, we had to modify the plan and it's what's before you today. Um, their comments in general are to um, leave the front facade as it exists and um, do the expansion in a way that's kind of straight back to the house and um, subordinates from overall in the existing structure. Um, so as you'll see, we designed our addition to kind of step back from um, the existing addition and just run straight back towards the rear property line. Um, that created an issue given the um, existence of Love Lane, which is what led to the um, pyramid and setback relief. Um, in total, of the 900 feet, uh, square feet that we're proposing, um, 52 square feet, of, no, sorry, hold on one second. I have a total of 670 where 420 is pre existing, and the total relief required is 250. Yeah, it is. is that that's right? the pyramid. No, I was just trying to state that there's only about um, about 900 square feet. I just want to give you numbers of what actually falls outside of the required setback. It's a, it's a minimum portion. Um, I'll get there. But um, Love Lane. Uh, the property has a four foot has a retaining wall along the lane and then set back four feet we have a stockade fence and mature hedging so as the property currently exists now you can't see the rear yard from the property line mm -hmm. love lane only services two residences that i'm aware of that actually have access off of love lane and it's also used as i um an access to drop off and pick up for the school for the kids and those uh people using love lane for that purpose never actually go as far as our property so turn into the school and exit on Union Street. So there's really no um, visible impact from any access of Love Lane or anyone else can be traversing Love Lane as to this proposed addition. Um, the original proposal, which you can see, um, had a proposed second story deck. We removed that as there were concerns. Um, that's always a common concern as they may be overlooking other people's property, especially when there's pyramid involved. So it's, um, it's a modest two-story addition. Um, Proposed deck. Um, again, this plan incorporates the comments of the ARB, and it's this lot is certainly distinguishable it, with its um, lot size, lot width, and the two row frontages, and the legally pre existing non conforming location of the house, making it challenging for the applicant to 
you know, to meet the zoning criteria as well as the criteria of the, of the historic preservation board. The only question I had, I don't see on here a, a GFA calculation. I, I, I can get that to you, but I have the okay. total GFA. It's um, I'm sure it looks like just by the I have a memo I prepared. I didn't have a chance to get it ready to submit, but I'll submit it tomorrow. But the total GFA of the existing is 1,965 square feet. Uh, the allowable GFA is 2,996. And we're proposing a total GFA of 2,865. 2865. 2865. Yep, we're so, 996 is so underneath. Correct. Yep. Great. Um, and we're well under our building coverage. Lot coverage of the state or slightly over. If this lot was a conforming lot, I ran the numbers, I think we'd be at about 18 and a half percent with this existing proposal or on a 20,000 square foot lot. I know it's not, but um, it's, otherwise, it's certainly a amount that has been granted by this board before. And um, I can answer any questions, go into the... So basically on level land, you want your property line is 14.7? Correct, yep. So it's so only point. That's Yes. Correct. And the two fronts and the two rears are always. And the house is currently between 14 and 15 feet from local lane as it is now. As stated, we can slightly set it back. It, it's generally in line, but it is um, reducing the, the relief. I'm basically fine with this. It, it has, um, you know, blends in well with the existing house. And it's, they're not huge. Well, it hasn't changed the character of the front of the house. and. Uh, which was, I think, yep. what was originally yep. discussed. This is way. Uh, oh, yeah, no, we had a, a changed roof line. It was increased pyramid. Um, we had a different front facade, but we respected all that. We're slightly increasing the front porch, which we know how to discuss with the ARB, but it fully meets all zoning. Right. And, and, and if you can't see the extension, yep. correct. Is, um, makes it feel somewhat more doable. The, the grade between where Love Lane is on the I guess the side towards the water where we are with the elevation and the retaining wall and the screening and the edge, it's almost invisible. So I think um, these changes they made are all above sea. So um, we could children no I'm fine with it. Ham, you're comfortable? I'm comfortable. Public. Is anyone here from the public that would like to have a comment? Advised. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we can make a motion to close the public hearing. I so move. All in favor? Aye. And now, if we could make a motion to ask Liz to write a decision for the three variances that are requested. I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a great night. Thank, Thank you. you too. So now we can make a motion. So you oh, wait, you have to make the decision. You have, no, you have to make a motion to adjourn this way. Okay. You have to make a motion to open 45 Hillside Drive. Yep, and, and to close it. Adjourn it. Keep it open. Bye, Bye. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, first, um, we make motion to adjourn 55 Howard to the October meeting. I second. All in favor? Aye. And if we can make a motion to adjourn 50, 45 Hillside um, to the October meeting. We have to open the public hearing. Sorry. We can open the public hearing for 45 Hillside. Make a motion. I so move. All in favor? Aye. And now we would like to make a motion to adjourn 45 Hillside until the October meeting. I so move. All in favor? Aye. And now we would like to move to decisions for those that need the um, 152 hand. So this is a decision for 152 Hampton Street. Um, there were numerous public hearings held on this matter. The ultimate disposition of the application is for the reasons set forth in the written decision. Um, the following variances were granted. 
uh, one for an expansion of the pre existing non conforming structure, and two for the proposed addition to intrude into the sky plane by 222 cubic feet, where zero cubic feet is permitted. Therefore, variance is granted for same. Um, that's to construct um, a two story addition to the existing commercial building on site. And their relief that's denied is the variance from Sag Harbor Village Code section 312. 0.6 B3, which is a change from one non conforming use to another, um, which was to change the use from office to retail. And that portion of the relief requested was denied. Again, at, for all the reasons set forth in the written determination. Am I making a motion to approve? Just make a motion to approve the decision as written. We can make a motion to approve the decision that was written. So I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I so Second, third, fourth. Aye. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Have a great night. Good. Thank you. <laughs>